comes a piece of bone as well. So those are the people who also would lose quite a fair bit of bone right. uh, in, the, in, the, in the process, unfortunately. What do we mean by trauma? Is this literally something that knocks the tooth out of alignment? Yeah, that's right. It knocks the tooth out. You, you have uh, facial trauma. People come in with facial accidents, right? Mm -hmm. Having, you know, uh, say, if, uh, you know, having to hit their face on a steering wheel, perhaps, for example, mm -hmm. and fall, fall, fall forwards and smash, uh, bang the face onto the floor. Mm -hmm. So you can evolve the tooth. At the same time, take away some of the bone. Right. So yeah. ordinarily, in a situation like that, if a trauma does happen or a tooth is, an extract, is extracted, what would be the recommendation of your dental practitioner in terms of dealing with that issue? Okay. I mean, for tooth extraction, it's very different from trauma, right? So yeah. in tooth extraction, there, there are ways that now, as uh, we're going to talk about on what we call a very rich preservation, how to try to minimize the amount of bone loss after the extraction. Mm -hmm. So that's one way. Uh, for trauma, I mean, you can't really prevent trauma because most of them are accidents. So accidents, <laughs> by, by definition... If we could, <laughs> we could. <laughs> yeah, they, but of course, uh, there are uh, sports, for sporting activities, for example, people who are in the uh, boxing profession, they'll know they'll wear, wear a mouth guard, for example, to try to prevent injuries to the teeth. So, or people who are playing rugby, right? Uh, they do that as well. So there are certain things they can do to prevent that from happening. But once it happens in a trauma, then uh, that, that happens. I mean, you can't really do very much for it. Then it's a matter of actually at the time deciding uh, how to salvage the situation. The particular surgeon, the dentist who are looking at it will have to decide whether is it viable to keep mm -hmm. that piece of a uh, little bit of bone that's floating around. Sometimes that happens, uh, uh, left behind or not. Okay, and so there are a lot of uh, uh, sort of... Uh, uh, ways of helping uh, to preserve as much bone as possible during the time. But sometimes if it's really dirty, if the wound is bad, bad, badly uh, infected, for example, then you lose the bone. And then it's a matter of actually thinking of reconstruction later on. So we may have to do bone grafting and all that to uh, help to uh, restore the bone contour, so prevent a little sagging, for us, especially for these young people. Right, we want to talk more about that process when we continue right here on Body and Soul. Today we're talking about bone jaw regeneration. Specifically, what's happened is a, a local development, a local invention recently launched as an exciting application to ensure against this by promoting bone healing in a natural process. The scaffolding process is what we'll be focusing on when we continue right here on Body and Soul. We're speaking today to Professor Victor Fan, an assistant professor with the Faculty of Dentistry at NUS. Stay with us just ahead at Body and Soul on 98 Live. It takes more than just an apple a day to keep the doctor away. Shape up with body and soul. Welcome back to Body and Soul Right here on 938 Live. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Daniel Martin. We're still taking a health check with you today, finding out more about bone jaw regeneration. As we found out in the first part of today's discussion, bone loss where teeth have been extracted can lead to shrinkages in the upper and lower jaws, and this could lead to a collapse of lips and cheek support, and even an eventual appearance of premature aging. We're going to find out more about that in just a while. But the good news is that today, more than ever, advances in medicine and dentistry have led to new and expanded areas of treatment. Now, one such area is bone regeneration in the jaw bones and around the teeth, and how these procedures to repair and grow new bone, unheard of just a few years ago, are now part of routine dental surgical care. We're speaking today to Professor Victor Fan. He's an assistant professor with the Faculty of Dentistry from NUS. If you have any questions, we invite you to call in right now, 669-11938. Professor Fan, we left off talking a little bit about uh, how it could affect your dental health as yeah. well. Uh, talk to us about how it could affect your appearance as well. Uh, a lot of people are concerned about anti-aging and premature aging particularly, especially if you're a young person, you have a traumatic experience or at least be, uh, with your teeth. How will this actually make a difference? Will it make a difference? Yes, certainly, uh, especially the front teeth, you know, because that's like you mentioned earlier in the program, uh, one of the components that could sag, so to say, is really if you have lost quite a bit of bone or you know, even lost the front teeth, right? and that of course comes along with it uh, bone loss as well then uh, the area right in front just on the lip you know underneath the nose right that the support there is lost so it's actually very obvious uh, as I always uh, mentioned if you 
have a grandmother who used to wear a set of dentures, right, and uh, a full dentures, and you ask her to take out a denture, and you exactly look like that. But, you know, because the support of the bone that is missing. And, uh, of course, with all this uh, lack of support, right, then the face itself does sag a little bit. And more importantly, actually, now you talk about anti-aging, of course, that's a medicine of uh, how, try, how to try to maintain health, and uh, it, even despite the fact that you're growing old, right? Uh, the fact is that in some studies as well that has mentioned the fact that if, if someone actually has lost his teeth, for example, and um, and lost the function, then the stimulation of the facial muscles and all that are, are not quite there, right? And there's a certain degree of atrophy and sagging as well. So to a certain extent, the mouth itself is very intricately related to the rest of the face, really. And uh, losing teeth itself can certainly make one look older. Right. Let's mm. talk about how we can treat and solve this problem as well. We're talking about bone regeneration today and how that can be a good option for many people who have had teeth extracted, who've had trauma as well. Uh, we actually had a call early on from Samantha. Uh -huh. She called during the break and she herself is considering dental implants. She's in, been advised by her dentist that she doesn't have enough bone, very much the process that we're talking about today. She doesn't have enough bone in mm -hmm. her jaw. Mm -hmm. And there are three options that she has. She's been uh, advised to either use a grafting process using her own bone, cow's bone or synthetic bone. These are the three options. Are these the three traditional options in terms of regeneration? Uh, yes. Uh, well, cow's bone or so-called synthetic bone sometimes come together because people feel, believe that they're not like part of the body, so to say. What it means by that is that cow's bone or bovine uh, bone uh, is really harvesting the, the, the bone and making it into a graft from, from a cow, okay? And there are also bone that has been taken from cadaver. That means uh, people who have donated bone to bone banks for various reasons, right? Uh, orthopedic surgery is to have lots of bone that's been removed for some reason for patients and they can be kept in a bone bank. And then they can be actually uh, reprocessed uh, to be uh, infection free and can be used as a graft, okay? And then of course your own bone. Your own bone, uh, basically your own autogenous bone, meaning that you're taking uh, bone from your yourself, right? So. It all depends, actually. Uh, my my answer will be that it all depends on in my own practice. I as I can I can say, if uh, the amount of bone loss is quite minimal, for example, and you probably just need to augment only a part of it, uh, a part of area, particularly just around the implant where you want to make it uh, uh, look more fuller and you know not to have too much uh, loss of support on the labia aspect, then maybe it's not such a bad idea to use some of these synthetic so-called synthetic elements like uh, cow's bone or cadaver bone. Right. Uh, but there are cases like we mentioned earlier, people have lost lots and lots of the bone because of trauma, fractures, or they have not been, uh, have been wearing danger for a long time, a lot of the thinning of the front part of the jaw, right? And you need to actually uh, augment the area there. Then to me, right, I still prefer the, your own bone, that means the patient's bone. Traditionally, we always tend to harvest it uh, from the hip. It's not exactly the hip, it's actually the pelvic bone, the bone, piece of bone just above the hip. So it's actually not part of the hip joint. Mm. Uh, and it's really very minimal morbidity to the patient. Uh, and down there it has lots and lots of good bone, right? Uh, we're really talking about the, those mushy bones that we see in Bakute, eh? the, <laughs> the, the juicy stuff. <laughs> and uh, that, that's the bone that actually contains all the bone forming cells and all the essential ingredients uh, for regenerating bone. There are situations whereby you need uh, support uh, and lots of uh, uh, sort of uh, bony support. Then you may have to take a bit of cortical bone as well. At the at the pelvic bone or the hip graft that we had traditionally, there's lots of bone there. There are also sm other areas that dentists have used uh, to harvest graft, especially where they think that well, it's not too uh, not too much bone that you need, so you do not want to go go through the procedure of taking from the hip. Then you can actually harvest this from around sites around the mouth. You can have actually uh, some bone graft from the chin, right? You can actually harvest a bit of bone graft from the chin. Or you can harvest a bit of bone from the side of the jaw, which is called a ramus on the side there. So I think uh, to answer her question, it's going to be a bit difficult. It's best to be advised by the dentist uh, as to rega uh, regarding how much is necessary. Uh, for sure, the patient's own bone is the best bone because that is something that is uh, part of the patient. And what it means is that if you are really harvesting uh, sort of a live bone cell, so to say, right, into the graft area where you want the bone to regenerate. Whereas if you are using a so-called artificial bone or grafted uh, or, or you know prepared bone, processed bone from say the cow or for, uh, from cadaver, then uh, there's a tendency that there's a slightly higher risk of infection and maybe the bone graft not taking. 
How much bone would you have to harvest? Let's say it was your own bone. Mm. Is it a significant amount, or does that depend again on the uh, the area that has to be regrown? That's right. It all depends actually. So uh, as a surgeon, when we want to uh, do something, we need to see okay, what what do we need really? So if there's a lot of bone that's needed, then you have a